Okay, so we're continuing our exploration of integer partitions in the Rogers Ramanujan identities. So we're getting close to being able to start doing the proof of these identities. And so in this video, we want to look at a generating function view of these identities. But let's just recall this theorem. So it says the number of partitions of n into parts of the form 5k plus 1 and 5k plus 4 equals the number of partitions of n whose consecutive parts differ by at least two. So this is one of the rogers ramanujan identities. So before we get going looking at the generating function version of this, I want to look at uh, an example just to remind us how this works. So if n equals 9, let's look at parts of the form 5k plus 4 and 5k plus 1. So that means 9 itself is a partition because we have um, 5 times 1 plus 4, good. We can have uh, 6 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So 6 is of the form uh, 5k plus 1. It's 5 plus 1. Good. And then the next thing we could have is maybe 4 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. Good. We could have 4 plus 4 plus 1. And then we can have all ones. So we have one, two, three, four, five possibilities here. Now let's look at the difference of at least two. So notice we can have nine itself. Um, we could have eight plus one. Those differ by at least two. We could have seven plus two, six plus three. Those also differ by 2. Notice we can't have 5 plus 4 because those only differ by 1, but we can have 5 plus 3 plus 1. So notice over here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 partitions of that type. Over here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 partitions of that type. So these numbers match. And so now I want to erase the board and look at a generating function version of both of these conditions, which is exactly how we're going to prove this in the coming videos. So I'm going to start off looking at the generating function for partitions whose parts are the, of the form 5k plus 1 or 5k plus 4 because that's a little bit simpler. So let's recall that if you set uh, p of n equal to the number of unrestricted partitions of n, we have the generating function for this. In other words, p n times q to the n, where n goes from zero to infinity, is equal to this infinite product, one over one minus q, times one over one minus q squared, times one over one minus q cubed, times one over one minus q to the fourth, and so on and so forth. Okay, so in previous videos, we argued what all of these things do, and we argued that this one controlled parts equal to one, this one controlled parts equal to two, this one controlled parts equal to three, this one controlled parts equal to four, and so on and so forth. So, and in a previous video, we did something with all partitions with only odd parts, and we only kept this term, this term, and so on and so forth, and we threw out all of the 1 over 1 minus q to an even power. So that tells us that in this case, we should keep this one because 1 is of the form 5k plus 1. We should keep this one because 4 is of the form 5k plus 4 and we should throw out all the others and we should keep everything of that form. So in other words, what we want, let's say f of q is equal to the generating function for our partitions. And by our partitions, I mean satisfying this rule up here. Okay, so what we have is f of q equals 1 over 1 minus q times 1 over 1 minus q to the 4th times 1 over 1 minus q to the 6th times 1 over 1 minus q to the 9 times 1 over 1 minus q to the 11 and so on and so forth.
So notice this gives us parts equal to one, parts equal to four, parts equal to six, nine, 11, and so on and so forth. So in other words, we're only keeping parts that are of the form 5k plus one and 5k plus four. But now we can write this all as one term like this. Maybe we could go k equals zero to infinity of one over one minus q to the 5k plus one times one minus Q to the 5K plus four. <clears throat> Great, so this will be our generating function that we'll use for partitions that only have parts of the form 5K plus one and 5K plus four. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at the generating function we get for this other condition. Okay, moving on, we're gonna find the generating function for the number of partitions of N whose parts differ by at least two. We're gonna need the following lemma. So this lemma says the number of partitions of N into at most K parts is equal to the number of partitions of N into parts whose largest part is greater than or, or is less than or equal to K. So I'm gonna sketch the proof of this, but it goes as follows. So you take a partition N, and that's equal to lambda one all the way to lambda K. So this one has K parts, and you have this ordering, lambda one is bigger than or equal to lambda two all the way up to lambda K. And you wanna form this diagram of dots, and so, <clears throat> This first row will have lambda one dots, and then you're gonna have a second row with lambda two dots, and so on and so forth, and your kth row will have lambda k dots. And then what you wanna do is, <clears throat> Reflect this across the diagonal, and what that will give you is a diagram whose first column has lambda one dots, whose second column has lambda two dots, and so on and so forth, until the kth column has lambda k dots. And notice here, the number of rows is talking about the number of parts you have, and the number of columns is talking about the uh, size of each part, but, but over here we have lambda one parts, and um, the largest part is lambda k. So you can see that has this duality between the number of parts and the largest part. And so in essence, this is a proof. This is just a sketch, but I think you can get the idea from this picture. Okay, good, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll write down a generating function for this type of partition and that will be the basis towards finding the generating function for this whole thing. So now, since these are the same number, we know that they have to have the same generating function. For the proof that we're going to do, we're actually gonna need this generating function but since these are the same, it's actually easier to calculate this one. And so let's recall that um, the generating function for unrestricted partitions is given by the following. So the sum n equal, n, to, n equal zero to infinity of Pn q to the n, and this is the product m equals one to infinity of one over one minus q to the m where each of those is expanded as a geometric series, and that's taking care of parts of a certain size, as we've discussed before. So now, notice if we cut this off, m equals one to k of one over one minus q to the m, we're only allowing for parts that are less than or equal to k. So this only allows parts Less than, e less than or equal to k. And so that could be, we could call that maybe p k of q. But now, since this number is the same as this number, it means that this generating function is the same as ge this generating function, which tells us that this finite product is a generating function of partitions of n into at most k parts. Okay, good, so now we're done with our preliminary setup to calculate this generating function. I'll erase the board and then we'll get to it. 
Okay, so now we're ready to calculate this generating function. So let's call it g. So we'll say g of q. So we'll write that first as a uh, sum over k, where k is the number of parts. So, and then we'll have an inner sum over each partition of size k. And so this inner sum will be um, over this lambda one up to lambda k, where these satisfy the following rules. Notice I put these in the other order than we have been doing, but that's okay. So lambda one is the smallest, lambda k is the biggest, we have uh, lambda i has to be bigger than or equal to lambda i minus 1 plus 2. So that's our difference 2 condition. Okay, good. And we can say that this is q to the lambda 1 all the way up to lambda k. Okay, so notice if we extract the coefficient of q to the n from this, we will have counted all partitions that satisfy this rule. Um, okay, good. So now what we can do is notice the following. So notice that lambda 1 is bigger than or equal to 1, but then lambda 2 is bigger than or equal to 3 because of that difference condition. Lambda 3 is bigger than or equal to 5, again because of that difference condition, all the way down here to lambda k, which is bigger than or equal to 2k minus 1 because of that difference condition. So what this tells us is that we can write lambda 1 as n1 plus 1, we can write lambda 2 as n2 plus 3. We can write lambda 3 as n3 plus 5, all the way up to lambda k, which can be written as nk plus 2k minus 1. And then notice also that we have this ordering. n1 is the smallest, going up to nk and n1 is allowed to be zero. Okay, good. So that allows us to rewrite this sum as follows. So here we can have this thing is equal to the sum over all these positive or non-negative k's, and now we have the sum over these n's, so n1 up to nk, Good, and then we can have this is q to the n1 plus up to nk plus 1 plus 3 all the way up to 2k minus 1. Good, so we're adding that. Okay, fantastic, and then it's a classic result that the sum of the first k odd integers is equal to k squared, so we can write this as k squared. Okay, great. And then the next step is we'll write this as k going bigger than or equal to zero, and now we have the sum zero less than or equal to n1 all the way up to nk. And then we can write this as q to the k squared times q to the n1 plus up to nk. Now we can factor this q to the k squared out. So let's do that. I'll just erase it here and I'll write it here. So q to the k squared. And now notice that this is a partition with at most k parts. And you might say, well, why isn't it exactly k parts? And that's because some of these ends may be zero. So if all of them are non-zero, then it has exactly k parts. But if one of them is zero, it has k minus one parts. If two of them are zero, it has k minus two parts, and so on and so forth. So altogether, this represents a partition with at most k parts. And we know the generating function for that type of partitions. And in fact, this red box is just another way of writing that generating function. So in the last board, we wrote that generating function and we had the following. So this is k bigger than or equal to zero, q k squared, but remember that generating function was this finite product of one minus q, one minus q squared, all the way up to one minus q to the k. 
So let's see what we have. This one over these terms is that generating function that's in the red. And then this q to the k squared came from this term. And then we still have this sum over the non-negative k. Okay, so we've just calculated this is the generating function of partitions whose consecutive parts differ by at least two. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll summarize what we've done in this video. Okay, so finally we're ready to state the generating function version of the rogers ramanujan identity, which is the way that we're going to prove it. So let's recall, we have the number of partitions of n into parts of the form 5k plus 1 and 5k plus 4 equals the number of partitions of n whose consecutive parts differ by at least 2. So we showed that the generating function for this left-hand side was this infinite product of 1 over 1 minus q to the 5k plus 1 and 1 minus q to the 5k plus 4. So there, that gives us parts 5k plus 1 and 5k plus 4. And then the generating function of this right-hand side is the sum k bigger than or equal to 0 of q to the k squared over this finite product, 1 minus q, 1 minus q squared, all the way up to 1 minus q to the k. So this is how we're going to prove this identity, which we'll start in the next video.